It's all going to be so exciting that you're back here, you know. Yes, it's time to stay. You'll be able to come to the wedding now. Of course. And when is the wedding? I've told you before, as soon as it can be arranged. Well, Robin wants it to be on June the 4th. That's when uh, Duke's parole's up. That was very clever of her to figure that out. No, she's so excited about it. We went to the zoo the other day. She did nothing but talk about it all the time, didn't she? Mm. Mm. I used to love the zoo when I was a little girl. One of those pictures we took, I had them developed. I think I've got them with me, actually, my purse. Yeah, you should get them. Go on, I'm sure Camille would love to see a happy outing with all of us. Would you? Of course. All right. I'll go and get them. I won't be a minute. What are you doing here? Duke, why are you so angry? Where else would I go? You could go back to the convent where you belong. I don't belong there. I belong here with you. You know, you're pushing this a bit too far. If you think you can insinuate yourself into Anna's and my life, then you better think again, little sister. Little sister? What is going on with you? Did you get yourself in some kind of trouble? Not at all. What is so wrong with my wanting to be here with you, Duke? I won't even dignify that with an answer. What are you up to? Not now. We'll, let's wait until we have some privacy. No. You just tell me now. I don't keep any secrets from Anna. No secrets, Duke. Not one. I don't know what your game is, but I don't like it. We have plenty of time to talk about this later. Yes, operator. I'd like to make a person-to-person -person call to Miss Janet Mackay and Lorleon. Thank you. What do you mean the circus are busy? You keep trying. This is urgent. Thank you, Operator. Janet, is that you? Duke, how are you? Well, not very well. You know, Camilla turned up here in Port Charles. Oh, so she's arrived safely. Good. Well, why is she here? She made a terrible decision, that's why. Did you know she was going to leave the convent? She's been struggling with her decision, Duke, ever since you and Anna left. Then why didn't you convince her to go back? Well, I tried to reason with her, but she was so caught up with what Abigail told her and the needlepoint... Oh, what needlepoint? Does Camellia still believe what that old crone told her? I have no idea what you're talking about. When you do talk, please help her to come to her senses and do the right thing. That's very well. I'll do the best I can. Goodbye. It was Janet. I was wondering, perhaps, if she could throw a little light on the mystery of the missing nun. That's not very funny. No, that's all right. I just want to know why you left the convent. I'm sure Camelia has her reasons. Oh, really? I'd like to hear them. I know Duke well enough to know that he only wants to protect me. Yes, you have been protected for all these years. There's no way you can protect yourself in the outside world. Camelia can look after herself, darling. She'll get hurt. I think what he's driving at is I, I would be an added burden to him. Now, what are you talking about? What added burden? I think she's referring to the fine. I thought you told her about it, sweetheart. No, I didn't. Well, it just slipped out when we were talking about the wedding. I'm sorry, I should have checked with you first. No, that's all right. Don't mind me being so cross. I just have a lot in my mind today, that's all. I won't be a burden to you or anybody. I'm a nurse. I can get work. I was hoping that there would be a spot for me at General Hospital. Well, Steve Hardy was very impressed with you. He told me that you worked very well on the flu epidemic. Well, they, they just needed another pair of hands. I think they would have been as grateful to anyone. No, they liked you. You won't have any trouble getting a job there, I'm sure. Would you, darling? Well, I think that's for them to decide, Anna. Well, it would be the perfect solution, wouldn't it? I really want to make Port Charles my home. This is your home. And we're your family. That's very sweet of you, Anna. But I think with Duke's financial problems, this probably wasn't the greatest time to come knocking on his door. And then why don't you go back to the convent? Oh, Duke, come on. Please, I understand his concern. He's worried that my presence might further delay your marriage. Oh, no, that's no concern of mine, Camelia. 
You won't delay our wedding at all. Well, I'm glad to hear that. I will talk to Steve Hardy tomorrow, and then you can rest easy about me. Oh, you all look so happy together. <laughs> we are. Look at this one with Robin and Duke and the penguin. Oh, I know. She insisted that they were all dressed in tuxedos. <laughs> oh, so you look so amused. We are, and cold. It was freezing by that point. Still, I can't help but wish for the kind of happiness that I see in these pictures. Oh, you'll get it. There's some gorgeous young man just waiting for you out there. Yes, I know he is. And then I have myself a daughter like Robin. Yeah. She's a darling, isn't she? Mm -hmm. Even though I do say so myself. Oh, no, anybody would say that. In fact, she told me that she was the best reader, writer, and speller in her class. She's so smart. Ah, but Jacob is the best arithmeticer. That's right. That's, mm -hmm. that's what she said, yes. <laughs> Talking of which, you know, I better get going. I thought you were the afternoon. Well, I do sort of, but I've, I have to meet Robin at the station in half an hour. I promised her teacher that I take the class for a tour of the headquarters. Oh, well, I love that. It's, it's part of the school curriculum for career choices, even though they're only eight. Every parent takes uh, the children on a tour of their workplace each week sort of thing. Well, I can hardly wait till we get married and I become Robin's official parent and then, you know, I can have the kids over for a tour of the club. Oh, yes, I'm sure the principal would love that. This is where we keep the wine and uh, this is the best wine we have in the house. Mm. I better be going anyway. Do you want to have dinner later, all three of us? Well, yes. I'd love that. Yes, that'd be good. Now, uh, Camilla and I have a little chat to have. We're going to talk about some things. Yes, Camilla? Uh, not right now, uh, Duke. I have a million errands to run. In fact, Anna, would you mind uh, giving me a ride? Not at all. I'd love to. I think we should talk now, Camilla. Well, Duke, I, I traveled rather lightly. I, I have a lot of things to get. Get them later. <laughs> Sorry, it's part of my personality. I have to do things as I think of them. It's a curse. <laughs> Her. I'm not. Yes, you are. You're on her case all the time. It's going to be difficult enough for her to make the transition from the convent to real life, and all you're doing is giving her a hard time about everything. Oh, you just don't understand, Anna. No, you're right. I don't understand. And if you continue to lock me out, I never will. I won't be long, Duke. And don't pout. We'll, we'll have a little chat. Good. See you later, darling. Mm-hmm. Goodbye. After I have my chat with Camilla, there's an idea I want to work on. Mm -hmm. You know, you just might be a June bride after all. Having a busy day? Well, evidently not as busy as you're having. How dare you do that to me? Drop cryptic hints like little bombshells, then walk out without giving, even explaining. I had something to do. Oh. Oh, how foolish of me. And I thought your errands were just an excuse to avoid talking to me. Duke, do you think I really wouldn't want to talk to you alone? Truth is, I wanted to go to the florist for this. So, it's a flower all over. Don't you remember, Duke? Doesn't this remind you of what we once meant to each other? Camelia, the circumstances four years ago were completely different. I don't think anything of it now. You bought me a camellia, and you put it in my hair. Remember? Yeah, I remember. I've never forgotten it. I think about it every day. Why don't you put it in my hair the way you used to? Oh, you stop this. Stop this talk. It's immoral. You're my sister. Am I? Yeah, well, okay, so you're my, you're my half-sister. But I'm not. What? I'm not your sister, Duke. Or any fraction thereof. We're not remotely related. Oh, my God, you have gone mad. I, I'm not insane, Duke. We thought we were related, but we're not. Angus was our father. No. Angus was not my father. The Baron Varenay is. Don't you want to hear the truth? How can I believe anything you have to tell me? Duke, how will you know unless you hear it? Duke, do you remember Abigail, the old woman? She gave me the needlepoint to do. She said that when I finished it, that it would reveal my true identity. The symbols were ones of a crest belonging to a man living nearby. 
the Baron Verony. He, he tried to throw me out when I went to see him, but he's housekeeper. She took me aside and she told me that my real mother was a servant in his household. Duke, she gave birth to me a day before Angus's wife gave birth to a stillborn child. Abigail was the midwife for both my mother and her. She switched the babies, Duke. I was substituted for Angus's wife's dead child. Angus never knew it. Nobody did, except for Abigail and the housekeeper. This is the most preposterous story I have ever heard. Duke, I saw a picture of my mother and the housekeeper. I look just like her. Duke, don't you see? It was right for us to fall in love when we first met. Nonsense. Duke, we were meant to fall in love. And now we, we can go back to where we were four years ago, Duke. You, know, you are mad. You are truly mad. You're as mad as that stupid old woman who told you this ridiculous story. Duke, do I look night. insane to you? For the first time in years, I, I, I feel right. I can listen to my heart. And I love Anna my... Devane. I am going to marry Anna Devane because that is exactly what I want. No, Duke, I, you still love me. You have... I've heard enough of this nonsense. Now, you get out of here. You go whatever you like. I don't care where you go. Go back to your convent. Get out of this flat and get out of Port Charles. papers the uh, closest scrutiny with a fine tooth comb mr quarterman they're quite in order yeah you better go over them again this uh, donnelly's quite a rogue he'll find some way to get lila's money oh edward there wouldn't be any money in the first place if it weren't for mr donnelly according to those papers this partnership is 100 percent on the up and up there's no way that sean donnelly or anyone else can gain access to lila's share of pickle lila profits or ownership you don't know this Sean Donnelly. I do know contract law. Believe me, this one's ironclad. All right, have it your way. Oh, thank you, Mr. Troutman. We both appreciate your hard work. You're welcome. Anytime I can be of service. Mr. Quartermain, hmm? Duke Lavery is waiting outside. What? Duke Lavery? What the hell's he doing here? I'm sorry. I knew you didn't want to be disturbed when he called, so I made the appointment. Well, you can be the one to tell him to leave, then. Uh, send Mr. Lavery in, please, Patricia. Lila, whose office is this? It's just common courtesy, dear. Duke Lavery, Mr. Quartermain. Mrs. Quartermain, Mr. Quartermain. Hello, Duke. Thank you, Mr. Quartermain, for seeing me at such short notice. I realize you're a very busy man. Yeah, well, get to the point. Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, give the man a chance, dear. Uh, tell me, Duke, uh, what's on your mind? Well, in a word, employment. What? Oh, yes, sir. You see, I, it's my understanding that you have extensive holdings, both here and abroad. And uh, I believe you could probably use someone with my executive background to help run this business. Are you crazy? You expect me to give you a job? Well, I was hoping you would, yes. But what about your club, Duke? Well, the club is doing very well, Mrs. Quartermain, but it won't help me out with this problem. What problem? I need to earn $100,000 in the next few months. Oh, my God. A hundred thousand dollars. Well, the only way you can pull a bundle that big is uh, on the downside of the law. But I hardly need to tell you what you already know, right? Mr. Quarterman, I'm only asking to do a worthwhile job. You will get in return every ounce of my No, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't hire you if you were recommended by the president. Oh, Edward. I promise you, sir, you get a very... No. I know all about you, Lavery, and I don't like what I know. Now, this meeting is over. That man, he's been in a foul mood all morning. Well, 
It was nice to see you, Mrs. Quartermain. I hope I get to see you again under less heated circumstances. Uh, no, no, wait, Duke, wait. I have a company, you know. Yes, I know that. It's uh, Pickle and Lila. <laughs> it's Pickle Lila. And I'm sure I could find something for you there. Oh, that would be fabulous. When could I start? Well, it's not entirely up to me. You see, Sean Donnelly is one of my, uh, my associates, and something as important as this, I'd have to clear with him. Yes, well, I understand that. Would, when would you talk to him? Well, he's away at the moment, but he should be back soon. I will talk to him just as soon as he returns. Hey, there's my little darling. How are you? Great. You should have been us with us on the tour today. It was great. All my classmates wished their mommy was just like mine. Well, so would their daddies if they knew your mommy. Oh, dear. <laughs> I was so proud of mommy. She's the head of this whole place. Mm -hmm. The chief of police. That's me. It was terrific, even better than when Mary Margaret's father let us visit his job at the chocolate factory. Yeah, well, you know, your mother's sweeter than any piece of chocolate I've ever seen. Oh, dear. <laughs> so many compliments, I don't know whether I understand it. Yes, well, you just better learn how, because there'll be a lot more where that came from. People who get married are always mush. You bet. And we're all getting married on June the 4th. You know, Duke said something to me about me being a June bride. Maybe he knows something we don't know, hmm? Uncle Duke, do you know something we don't know? <laughs> Why don't you tell that gorgeous mother of yours that I am working on something, and it has not quite been confirmed, but I'm hoping that it'll be A-OK -okay for June. That's mm. too much to remember. <laughs> did you get that? Oh, I, I did indeed. Why, well, you tell him that I've got my fingers crossed. She's got her fingers crossed. So do I. So does Camellia. We've all got our fingers crossed. Well, that's just great enough. Mommy told me Camellia's back. I'm really glad because I like her so much. Yeah, she's a she's a nice lady. Well, now you get to have your whole family at your wedding. Now you listen to me. Duke, Anna, and Robin, they're my family. Camellia is not a part of my family. She's not the family I want. She most certainly is not the family that I need. You understand that? She's absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with our future. I, I don't know, darling. It's all right. It's all right. I'm sorry. Did I make you mad? I don't know. No. Come here. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to get mad at you. I'm just. There's some things in my mind that are bothering me, and you know they got they got mixed up with the things we were talking about, and that's why I got upset. I didn't mean to get upset at you. Understand that. Uh huh. I didn't make you mad. The other things did. Yeah. That's right. The other things did. What other things? What other things? Well, you know, I'm trying so hard to get back on my feet. I'm trying to pay this fine, hundred thousand dollars, and well, you know, there are so many obstacles in my way. I just want to start our lives together. Never bothered you this much before. It was always the first time, Anna. You forgive me? Sure. Do you promise? Yes. Yeah. You coming to dinner tonight at our house? Well, just you try and stop me. Oh, can you bring Camellia? Mommy? Is it all right if you can? No, uh... Camellia won't be able to come this evening. She has some other things to do. Camellia, this is Dr. Hardy. Oh, yes, doctor. I hope you have some good news for me. Uh, could you be at the hospital tomorrow to meet with Dr. Stryker to talk about the refresher course? Certainly. Uh, what time would you like me to? Well, that's up to you. You'll have to try and squeeze in a meeting between breaks. Can you manage that? Absolutely. Does this mean that I have the job? If you still want it, it's yours. Oh, <laughs> Dr. Hardy, those words are, are like music to me. I can't thank you enough. Just do a good job. That'll be thanks enough. 
I will never forget your kindness. My pleasure, Camelia. I'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Goodbye.